Quitting YouTube and teaching. I've become fascinated with watching these types of videos recently on YouTube because in 2024 there has been an epidemic, if you like, using a serious word, of both teachers and YouTubers quitting their respective fields. Now, in the world of YouTube, I find this very interesting because you've seen some extremely big YouTubers with big platforms who have just decided that for whatever reason, whether it's coming to the end of 10 years, like someone like Tom Scott, or just getting to the end of a process like Matt Pat with Game Theory, they've just decided that that, that that is the end. And I've seen something similar in teaching. Recently in teaching, we've seen some of the highest numbers in the UK of teachers leaving. A whopping 10% of the teachers in teaching left teaching last year. And I find that absolutely mind blowing. I've also found it very interesting because I am a, a teacher and a YouTuber, but I've seen a lot of teachers who do exactly the same as what I do on YouTube, leave teaching too. So I've drawn a lot of similarities between what teaching is like and YouTube, and I found it extremely fascinating. I think I've come to some sort of conclusions that have supported me with not quitting YouTube or teaching yet. Who knows what the future will hold. But I thought it would be interesting to kind of discuss the similarities between the two and hopefully if, if someone's out there watching and thinking about what it's like as a teacher or YouTuber and, and thinking about quitting, maybe some advice here would be supportive too. So teaching is surprisingly similar to YouTube. You might think, well, that's a bit strange. Both teachers and YouTubers have an audience. That audience are, you know, in teaching, I have my little class, my class of 20 children, and then online, I'm blessed to have a, an audience of thousands, even if it goes through peaks and troughs of the amount of people who are actually in the classroom watching a video at a certain time. And every time I come to do a, a lesson in the classroom or on YouTube, there is a certain amount of planning that's involved and that planning takes a lot of research and that is almost like the initial step. And with YouTube, the amount of admin that you have is very much dependent on the amount of admin that you want to create. Like I don't script these videos as you can probably tell by the way that I'm talking right now, but I do plan out my lessons with specific templates and things like that. And of course then it comes to this process, which is the delivery. The way that you deliver is the most important thing for teaching and of course for YouTube because if I don't nail this then people are going to click off very quickly and that's not very good for the algorithm. And then that brings me on to the next stage. After you teach a lesson with the children you often think that, that is the end and it's just not. Thankfully you know with YouTube you do have algorithms which can help you understand what the viewers did or didn't understand what they liked and what they didn't. But in the class, you've got this thing called marking. And at the end of every single lesson, you get out the books and you mark through them and you have a look to see who understood what you spoke about or whether the children actually thought you were talking about a load of waffle and just didn't understand anything at all. And then of course, there's all these extra jobs in teaching that kind of come from being a teacher. You've got all sorts of different administrative things, simple things like just doing the register. If you've got specific children with specific needs, you need to do additional things to support them to make sure they can access the learning. And I guess there's some, some similarities between YouTube too, you know. Certain people have uh, an appetite for different types of content. And I find myself as a creator creating different types of content to support the needs of other people who watch this channel. I create more nowadays on Instagram and TikTok, creating shorter videos because I find that people find those types of videos a little bit more interesting than these types of videos. But I think that's where we draw the first part of burnout. I've read a book recently by Ali Abdal, a very prominent YouTuber, as you might have heard about, and his book spoke about burnout. And he split burnout into three different categories. You've got overwork, lack of rest, and then the new one, which I hadn't really thought about, misalignment. And we're gonna talk about all of those. So to start off with overwork, I think when it comes to YouTube, it's extremely easy to overwork because there are so many different things that you can do. As I spoke about, I can take this video in a second and I can split it up into different YouTube shorts, TikTok reels, and I can then take the text from the, the transcription and turn that into an email. There's absolutely so many different things that you can do. And in teaching, it is exactly the same. I, I've got this display behind me, and I don't know if you can tell with this one here, this, this display around the corner is pretty, it's pretty blank and I could do the displays. I'm in work on a Sunday at the moment and I find that interesting because I've got inspections and with inspections I have these huge folders that I have to complete and 
If I was being a fantastic YouTuber, I could again look at the analytics of my channel and look at what my plans are, the trajectory. And as YouTube grows, it turns more and more into a business than anything else. And I find that extremely fascinating. The more you get involved in teaching, the more you realize the limit of your earnings exists. And to get any further income, which is what people want when you, know, you talk about lifestyle creep and things like that, you have to take on additional responsibilities. But I don't know about you, I come into my job as a, as a teacher to teach the children. But the thing is about teaching, to get any additional income, you have to do more of the things that are nothing to do with teaching. For example, subject leadership, year leadership, going into senior leadership, and all those jobs have additional responsibilities that have nothing to do with teaching. You might still be in contact with the children, but when you get into the higher levels of senior leadership, you're not actually in the classroom. And I know for myself, that's not what I want. So then what ends up happening is you sidestep. And I guess well, this is what this YouTube channel is. It's kind of a bit of a sidestep. That sidestep then becomes a bit of a, an income earner. But then you're ending up doing two jobs, if you like. I always like to see this YouTube channel as a hobby. But then when you get home from work, and that's what I've got to work on, it can feel like work. And with YouTube, it becomes very similar too. Because with YouTube, you get paid through AdSense. But what a lot of YouTubers realize straight away is that the AdSense that you get from videos is minimal. I sit at the moment on, on a YouTube AdSense that is, is quite small. So then people go, right, well, how can I earn additional types of income? Well, I could then start looking at monetization options. I can start looking at products. I can then start looking at sponsorships. And all of those different steps have additional responsibilities and additional tasks that you have to do that fall outside of what you initially came to do YouTube for, which is creating videos. Working with the brands, I'm so privileged to work with so many tremendous brands, but it's the thing that I suck at the most because I struggle with collaboration, communication, talking with different brands, thinking about what we're going to look at, pitch and all those. I just wanna make videos sometimes. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but of course there's those expectations that come from that. And if you want YouTube to expand, much like if you want your teaching career to expand, you have to take on additional responsibilities which fall outside of your role. So now that leads to the burnout phase. And I think the first step there is overexertion. If I'm doing the two jobs, then it can lead to overexertion. And I guess that's why I've not uploaded on this channel as much is because you can feel very quickly burned out when I get home from work and I have to work on videos and things like that, that's where that comes into it. And because I'm doing that, the second part is not having enough breaks because my time is finite as a teacher. You can imagine how big the role is anyway. Having that amount of time, that small amount of time, I then eat that up with editing or creating shorts and whatever other content I need to make. And I find that uh, something that's quite challenging because then I don't have that. And I guess the third part then of burnout is misalignment, both in teaching and in YouTube. In teaching, I think there's a lot of people who find themselves misaligned with what they came into the career for. Teaching now has this tremendous amount of admin work that has nothing to do with actually being in the classroom teaching the children. And I guess that for some teachers is just like, what's the point? Now, working with brands is something I enjoy doing, but then there is a whole other element of business that, that becomes quite cumbersome, quite taxing on yourself. It's quite you know challenging in that way. And then that becomes a misalignment too. When I think about YouTube and teaching, I split things down into three different sections. And I guess this brings me on to the tips of how I've been able to continue going for five years, even if it's been quite inconsistent. Number one is kind of the students. Number two is the teacher or the YouTuber. And number three is the system. So when it comes down to the students, I think to make the longevity go for a longer amount of time, you have to find ways of enjoying the process. And that can be quite challenging. But when you come into teaching, just like with YouTube, you've got to look back at the things that you enjoy. I always speak about MKBHD and he has the octopus theory. And as you grow as a YouTuber, you grow all these different arms, but you will have these hearts that you enjoy doing the most. So for example, with YouTube, I, I do just enjoy these conversations with the camera. It's a great opportunity for me to reflect and that's what I wanna do more of. But then another arm might be editing and it can be a challenge to grow the editing side of things because it's, it's a lot of work that's involved. Another heart, but in teaching you kind of have hearts too. So my heart in teaching is actually being with the children, 
doing the teaching part. I also enjoy doing a lot of supporting other teachers, you know, through what we call CPD or training. Not everyone enjoys that. Some people would hate the process of doing that. I, I really enjoy that. So that is a heart that I always want to be able to keep. In YouTube, there are certain hearts such as this, such as, you know, the technical side of things that I always want to keep. But as things expand, you've got to look at how you're going to refine things. And I guess the, th the next thing within the student focus is making sure that you can enjoy the process. Easier said than done as a teacher because you don't necessarily control the workload that you are set. And I think that's the big difference between YouTube and teaching is you don't control that as much as what you do with YouTube. The amount of money that you can earn from YouTube is exponential, whereas teaching it's kind of set that makes sense. So that workload is set and I guess finding snippets within the day to do things that you actually enjoy is crucial. Same as with YouTube, making videos that you actually enjoy is crucial. And I think I find myself in the process at points where I've created videos that I know would work. So during online learning, it was Bitmoji. Any video that I made with the word Bitmoji in would fly, you know, and that means income and additional subscribe, all that sort of stuff. But then I found myself becoming Bitmoji Blake more, and then that's when I didn't enjoy things. So I was able to kind of refine things and look at other opportunities where I can just create things that I enjoy. And in the classroom then, I'm able to do something similar where it's just finding five minutes here and there to do the things that I enjoy, whether it's just playing a game, whether it's just reading to the class or just being a bit of a bit of a wally. Wally in the UK means a bit of a silly bit. I'm using a lot of colloquial terms. Being a bit of a donut, if you like, in front of the kids, making them laugh. And that's something that I really enjoy. And that brings me back to my why as a teacher, and that's to, to help and make children enjoy education. Then we move on to the teacher focus, and this is where it becomes a bit of a bit of a challenge because when you look at the teacher focus, you look at the creator focus, and you know that you need to bring an income from either one of those. I'm blessed as a teacher that you know living in Dubai, I have a good tax-free salary, so I don't need to worry too much about the YouTube side of income and things like that. But I know for those people who might rely on it, it might be a challenge. So as a teacher, you need to look at your own means and see if you can refine the amount that you're spending, if that's possible, um, to make sure that you don't have things that go above your means. Because I think that in that way, if you can live within your means, you're not continually going and pushing to get additional income, which can then bring on more work, overexertion, lack of breaks, and ultimately lead to a misalignment and, and burnout for either the creator or the teacher. So living within your means and also trying to refine things that way is definitely something that's beneficial because then when responsibility opportunities come your way, you can then look at your income and go, is that really suited towards me rather than yes, more money, brilliant, that's what I need. And then finally, the, the next one is impossible. As a teacher, you have the system. The system is not necessarily designed to, to support your well-being as a teacher. Sometimes it does perfect, sometimes it's challenging. And you know, I mean, on a Sunday, like I said, where I've got to do an inspection tomorrow, and that's where that is a slight misalignment because that brings challenge. If that if that inspection wasn't there, would I would I necessarily be in on the weekend? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Um, but as a teacher, that's something that that can be quite challenging, uh, and the system is important to kind of discuss. It can be quite challenging sometimes to talk to senior leadership man managers and talk about well-being and things like that because it seems to be a bit of a tokenistic gesture at the moment where it's just like, oh, throw the well-being word about. But I think it is important to look at things within the school and to be vocal about things. I'm part of a group at the moment which is called Life After Teaching. It is the most miserable but supportive group I've ever been part of and it's so sad to see so many teachers 150,000 teachers or something like that who are at the wit's end. Perhaps not all of them, but it is, it's really sad to see that. And that, that comes down to the system. And that's where having opportunities to speak about challenges is so important because without speaking up, it becomes impossible. And with, the, with YouTube, it's, you know, it's a vocal platform, YouTube, but the system isn't necessarily designed to support the creator either you know with youtube we see the world of artificial intelligence i think perhaps for some creators that's where artificial intelligence is going to maybe take over some of the roles and enjoyment of being a creator you also see that 
you can't necessarily control the algorithm in YouTube, which then leads to not really being sure on what you're doing as, as a creator. You see how other platforms like TikTok and Instagram have taken over with shorts or short videos. And then you become a bit confused on what to do too. And where that confusion stems, it can just be a bit of a bit of a challenge there too. So I think being vocal about some of the challenges that you face as a creator, a bit like I'm doing right now, is also supportive too. Where am I going with this video? No, I am not quitting YouTube and I am not quitting teaching yet. But I found it really interesting to see the similarities between the two professions and see the similarities between how I felt in both fields in the past. I know I've been so inconsistent with this channel, it's probably a surprise that I'm actually uploading this in the first place. But here we are. And I think taking that opportunity to be a little bit more unstructured in your schedule is great because I don't have those commitments, which then falls back on what I'm saying before. But I do find it something that is, is a bit of a challenge to know what I'm doing in the future because I want to try and make things balanced. I think going forward, I'm going to go with something that's called a one for me, one for you strategy, where I create one video or piece of content that is you know, for you guys, and then one piece of content that is for me, something for me to enjoy. I think the, the audience that I have at the moment, you guys are really good at supporting both, to be fair, but we'll see how that, that goes. And then in terms of the system, I'm gonna be as open as possible when those moments of burnout come about and communicate that too. I have so many videos that I'm, I'm currently sat on at the moment and it's trying to find the time to create them. But there we go, YouTube and teaching burnout. Quit talk, quitting. Hopefully you found this video somewhat useful. I find it very interesting to just talk about some of these things and some of the things that I've seen uh, as an educator and a YouTuber. And hopefully this, this can support you in some way.